Attention farmers, do you know what your operation's really worth? Today's guest will help you find out. Hi, I'm Norman A. Hood, financial advisor and host of the Exit Plan Show. I interview America's top advisors to help business owners enjoy more freedom, grow companies faster, and retire someday on their own terms. Today's guest is Daryl Dunneman. He's an agricultural financial consultant and accountant with Bonnet and Dunneman LLC, certified public accountants and consultants. Bonnet and Dunneman serve clients in 18 states and have offices in Bushnell, Illinois and Havana, Illinois. Daryl's a 1975 graduate of the University of Illinois and a nationally recognized expert in the areas of agricultural financial analysis, business succession planning, and agricultural estate and income tax management. He's the editor of the Farm and Ranch Tax Letter, a monthly agricultural tax publication, and writes a regular tax management column for Farm Journal. Daryl's contributed to columns in practically every major farm publication in the United States and is a regular speaker at a number of national agricultural business education venues. 85% of Bonnet and Dunneman's business is in agriculture. Welcome to the Exit Plan Show, Daryl. Good morning, Norm. How are you today? I'm great. Good. Today, I thought we'd cover uh, three topics on this, on uh, about farm business valuations. First of all, we're going to talk about why they're needed, and then we're going to talk about the difference between valuing a sole proprietorship in, a, in an entity such as an LLC or a corporation. Let's just jump into the first one. Why does a farmer uh, really need to have their business value? There's actually three primary purposes, Norm. Uh, first, which is some kind of, kind of obvious, if we're going to sell a business, we want to know what it's worth. Uh, the second and more important, a lot of times, is if we're talking about estate planning, succession planning. So at that point in time, we may be looking for a state tax valuation. So uh, for down the road, when an individual passes away, we have to have an accurate measurement of their net worth, and that's then used to calculate an estate tax return in the event an estate tax return is needed. And then commonly through our succession planning process and through estate planning, we also need to have a benchmark, a value, because we're going to be giving away gifts. Uh, we're limited to $14,000 a year, and so we need to make sure that the interest that we're giving away either does not exceed the $14,000 per individual, or we'll use those measures to do a gift tax return if that's indicated. Uh, so those those two or three things, and again, occasionally, uh, we have a demand as accountants, we're required to uh, prepare financial statements, put a value on a business for lending purposes. We're seeing more and more of that as farm business operations continue to increase in size and require more amounts of capital from their financial institutions. Okay, good. So, you know, a lot of people, a lot of guys out there and are uh, sole proprietors, but then as farming's gotten larger, there's also a lot of entities now. Uh, how do you go about just by, uh, valuing uh, sole proprietorship? Okay. Sole proprietorship, obviously, is one of the most simple. Uh, it will take certain disciplines. Basically, uh, a licensed uh, appraiser is going to be required to place values on real estate if real estate is present. Uh, we'll need the services, say, of a qualified valuation person then in the area of machinery, equipment, livestock. Sometimes uh, we use uh, people like auctioneers. Other times, for example, I had an engagement in Southern Illinois. I went to an individual who I had a history with to value the dairy cattle because his job in life is putting together groups of cattle. And so he obviously knew the value of dairy cattle, so it's important to have an expert. So regardless of whether it's the individual or whether we're doing entity valuation, the proper individuals need to be present. And then, in our case, the accountant would go ahead then and create the financial statement, taking those information that was taken from the auctioneers and the appraisers, place them together, and then looking at things such as bushels of corn that's on hand, uh, looking at prices then we'd get from local individuals, to make sure that we've got everything. We would also then at that point in time uh, need a verification of loans. A lot of times then if we're responsible for that statement then we'll send 
loan confirmations directly to the financial institutions they work with, and then put those things together. But again, it's very simple as we get into other choices here as we look at entities, you'll see it's a little more complex. Okay, so, you know, let's talk about the complex now. How about uh, entities like corporations, <coughs> LLCs? Entity and, and, uh, and a good corporation is a good idea. Uh, that is, uh, what we use then is a little more complex because then we have to look at certain other factors. If you and I, for example, owned a business together or even owned a piece of dirt together, uh, let's use dirt, $14,000 an acre is some prices we're seeing, say, in McDonough County. And so if you and I owned a piece of dirt together and something happened to me, you're probably not going to pay my widow $14,000. That's the top of the market. You may come back with something and say, well, you know, I feel more comfortable at $12,000 and you've got some authority there because you already own half of it. And so that difference between the $14,000 and the $12,000 is what we would call a discount. So when we get into entity valuations, often we have multiple owners. And so we have then, we do the same thing that we talked about before. We have to get the appraisers of the real estate. We have to get the appraisers of the machinery. If there's livestock involved, uh, and we place that all together. And then there are certain other things we need to look at. Let's take a C corporation, for example. And I've got a few of these around that still have real estate in them. Uh, we never were in favor of putting real estate in corporations, but sometime we saw a huge increase in C corporations back in 1978. And people did not think at some point in time that those things were going to come apart. And so they put real estate in there, which was really a bad idea. But we have to then still deal with something then called a built-in gains tax. Uh, again, if you were the buyer of that corporation and all you were interested in was getting the real estate out of it, you buy the corporation, you've got to basically sell that ground during the liquidation process, even though you're going to end up with it in your own name. So there is a tax that's due. A capital gains tax uh, is present in an individual situation, but in a corporate situation, for example, corporation does not have capital gains. And so that's it basically ordinary income for a corporation. So that's a charge. If you were buying that corporation, you're not going to want to pay that tax. You're not going to pay the full value of the real estate. You're going to pay the value of the real estate, less liabilities, less this tax. Then once we get that calculated, we have to look at two other standard discounts. One is a discount for lack of control. Now, again, getting back, let's just say I'm a one-third owner and you're the two-thirds owner of this entity, obviously you've got control. My share is not worth as much as what yours is because you have the control. I'm what they call a minority owner. And so we go through a series of calculations based on a, a number of standards that are out there. They've looked at companies that have sold over the years with minority shareholders. There's a whole group of things we come up with. But then we come up with what we believe in, and this, this requires one more person, it may be the accountant, but you're going to want somebody with an ABV designation, which is uh, accredited business valuation, which is issued by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, or you're going to want a certified valuation analysis or analyst, which is a member of the National Association of Certified Valuation Analysis, uh, NACVA. Uh, and so those individuals are used to calculating these discounts. These are not commonly uh, found, we, for example, are about the only firm in West Central Illinois, other than, you know, you go to Peoria, uh, Quincy, who do a lot of this type of work. So it's a specialized individual that has to be utilized. The next discount that we calculate is the discount for lack of marketability. Again, how many people are going to be interested in buying stock, even though there's land might be the underlying asset, how many people are really going to be interested in buying an operation if they can't readily sell it. Uh, we can go put real estate on the market. It takes a period of time to liquidate. We can put machinery on the market. That's auction. That's a really short period of time. But when we get into an entity that has those, then we have an issue where we have to go through and then calculate these discounts to get at the, the bottom line. And a lot of times we'll see if we have a minority interest, uh, a discount from what we call fair market value. If we we're just auctioning the assets off, could be as great as 40 or 45 percent. If it's a very small interest, like we see a lot of times in gifting, we could have a 45 percent discount. And so 
These all have to be pulled together, so it's a much more complex process, requires a written report, then this written report can be used as a basis for a gift tax return or an estate tax return. Uh, and if you're actually going to sell the corporation, wanted to put it on the market, then you could use the same techniques. And, and they're fairly similar, whether it's a limited liability company, which we see a lot of, uh, an S corporation, and we may not have the built-in gains issue with an LLC or a partnership or an S corporation that we do with a, with a C corporation, but they're all things that need to be considered. Okay. Well, I think you did a pretty good job of covering that. Any last uh, minute advice here, parting advice before we head out? Uh, make sure that you know the quality of the individuals that are doing the work for you. Okay, great. Okay, well, if anyone wants to get in touch with Daryl, we're going to have his information in our show notes, how you can get a hold of him, his phone number, his website, and we encourage you to contact him if you need any more information about these subjects. You can also visit our website if you uh, would like uh, more information about the Exit Plan Show and any of the advisors in our network. Thanks again for joining us today, and we'll see you next time. <music>